Hello everyone, my name is Semra Altundan and I work for the British Council of Turkey. We are very happy to welcome you to our today's session on studying psychology in the UK webinar. Our speakers are Alice Stewart from University of Edinburgh, Polina Lewandowska from University of Essex and Siobhan Raab from University of Bath. Before we start, let me give you a brief information on the British Council. We are the United Kingdom's International Organization for Cultural Relations and Education Opportunities working with over 100 countries globally. This event is our chance to bring together UK universities and students. The session will last for one hour and is being recorded. The recording will be shared after the session. Probably not late to you, but still will be good to remind. We have one more uh, webinar, which is studying engineering in the UK tomorrow. Don't forget to sign up if you are interested. The microphones are muted, so feel free to write your questions into the chat section. We'll do our best to answer all of them at the end. Now, I'd like to give the floor to Siwon from University of Bath. Siwon, welcome. And Hi. thank you for joining us. Lovely, thank you very much. Floor is yours. Lovely, right, let me share my slides then for everyone. One second. <clears throat> Okay, that should be loading for you now. Perfect, can you see that all okay? Yeah, perfect, thank you, great. So hi everyone, uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Yes, so my name is Siobhan Ralph. Um, I'm here at the University of Bath. Um, I work within the undergraduate admissions and outreach team. Um, so if you have any questions about coming to Bath or the UK um, or the application process, then please do ask away. Um, but for, yes, for today, we'll be focusing on studying psychology in the UK um, and I'll be looking at our courses here, here at Bath. Um, so I'll take you through a quick introduction of us here um, at at um, Bath and then I'll then move on to our courses in psychology um, and psychology related subjects. Looking a bit um, not only into the courses but also um, our career support, our guidance um, and what our students are doing afterwards um, as well. So a bit of background um, as to who we are then. So we are a campus-based university um, just in the southwest of England. Uh, so you can see on the map there we're just sort of I'm heading towards the southwest, quite close to the, um, to the Welsh border. Uh, we're around um, just on, just over an hour away from London, um, about 10 minutes away from Bristol. So it's, it's a really great base um, to be. Um, and the city itself is a lovely historic um, and cultural city as well. Just to show you a little bit of our campus here. Um, so we, like I said, are campus-based um, universities. So on our campus, you'll have all of, all of your teaching spaces, your first year housing um, and your sports um, and arts facilities too. Um, and then just sort of in the top right of that picture, you can see the Bath skyline um, um, as well. So like I said, a really lovely city, very, very safe, um, one of the safest um, in the UK. Um, and we have a really lovely, friendly community here. Within our community, um, we have around 18,000 students here at Bath and over 30% of those do come from outside of the UK um, and represent over 130 different nationalities too. And we do have a number of student societies, um, including the Turkish society as well. So you can certainly find your home community um, whilst being part of the larger Bath community too. Now, in terms of student support, um, and I'll, like I said, I'll touch a bit on career support um, in sort of the latter half of my little section, um, but we do have specific sp um, support for um, international students, um, including our um, immigration service, a dedicated programme during welcome week um, of activities and networking events, um, and we also offer um, free, airport trans um, free airport transfers from Heathrow Airport to um, so we um, have all that support there for you. Um, and then I will move on just a tiny bit um, into career support in just a second. And then finishing up with our fast facts about Bath, we do have a couple of international scholarships here. Uh, the first is the Chancellor Scholarship, which is worth up, up to £2,000 um, based on A-levels or the equivalent. Um, I believe for the diploma, it's um, between 90 and 95% in your final grade. Um, and then we also do have the IB Scholarship um, as well. These are fee reduction scholarships for your first year. Um, so you don't need to apply for these. If you have the grades, then you will automatically be um, awarded them. Um, and it doesn't matter what subjects you're doing either. Um, they are for all of our degrees. So that was a quick intro um, into the university. So now I will head um, straight on to the courses that we do have here. Um, and there are lots of different psychology courses across the UK. Um, here at Bath, we have sort of two main courses and we have our straight psychology course and that 
um, also with a placement year option as well. And then we have our education with psychology um, and that and that degree with with a placement too. So we only have um, two degrees here that do focus specifically um, on psychology, um, but you can make them as broad or as focused as you would like. Um, and it's very much down to you and how you want to explore um, these degrees. Now, in terms of our psychology degrees here, here at Bath, um, we have um, a really great department here, um, a very supportive um, and rewarding department as well. Um, there are currently around 500 undergraduate students in our department um, and 100 postgraduates supported by 70 um, academic staff. One of these who will be your personal tutor whilst you're here with us too. Um, so you'll also get that one on one support um, as well. We have um, very, a very broad focus on, on different types of psychology, so we don't um, just have one degree based on one type of psychology. We have lecturers and academics who have backgrounds in clinical, cognitive, developmental, environmental, health, social um, and a whole other range too. Uh, so you can really make your degree here as broad um, or as um, focused as, as, uh, as you would like really. In terms of the um, sort of the contact hours and, and how much time you'll be spending um, in in class, typically in your first year you'll have around ten to twelve hours per week um, in classes, in lectures, in seminars, in tutorials, um, and then the rest of that time around we expect around twenty two to twenty eight hours of independent study. So this is the time that you'll spend preparing for your lectures, preparing for your seminars, doing your essays, um, working in groups, and um, just you know doing your 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 work um, outside of um, your your uh, your classes so we, so we do expect that you know you'll be working around 40 hours per week um, and around a third of that will will be in class um, and the rest will be your independent study too um, and our degree here is quite focused on coursework so around 60 percent um, of your um, assessments will be coursework based so these can be um, sort of long written pieces of coursework they can be more more um, presentations, um, more group work, and then around 40% will be um, exam based. Um, and you'll tend to have um, e exams for the more maths based um, degrees, um, sorry, maths based uh, courses that um, you are doing um, as part of your degree. Just to give you a bit of an insight um, into the um, modules that, that um, we have here. So um, it is a three or four year course, depending on if you do do a placement year, um, but the structure um, and the course content does, does remain the same. Um, so during your first year, you will do um, a range of different uh, modules um, in research methods, in mind and behavior, um, in, in, a, in in uh, researching and in applying psychology um, as well. And then you also get to choose um, different modules based in cognitive, in biological, developmental, social um, within that as well. Then in your second year, you'll kind of have the same sort of group of um, core modules there. But again, you'll, you'll get to choose your own um, your own units. Um, and then in your third year, you'll choose your own um, dissertation, um, which can be completely your own focus. And then again, you can choose your own modules there um, as well. So you can really make it, like I said, as focused or as broad um, as, as, as you would like. Um, our degree here, our BSc in psychology is, is an accredited degree by the British Psychological Society, so the BPS. Um, so if you are planning to go on and do um, postgraduate studies um, or things like that, then quite often you do need to have a um, BPS degree um, from your first degree. So do, so do just have a think about um, what you might like to do um, and if you do need to um, sort of have have a BPS degree um, and if so, what 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 is the best choice for you? Now, in terms of our entry uh, requirements, um, we um, have a bit of a range depending on the um, subject that you are, sorry, based on the courses that, that um, you are currently doing. Um, but just to give you a bit of an idea right now, if you're doing um, something like the IB, um, then you would need to have that. 36 points with 766 at higher levels um, and then if you're doing the diploma then you would need to have 85% um, of your final GPA um, and you'd also need some background in mathematics in there um, as well. If you are doing your um, your um, IB or your APs for example then we do like to see a good combination of both, um, both a numerical and essay based subject um, and in your personal statement we really do like to see that you have an active interest in psychology um, and you have engaged with its theories and, and its principles um, and you are showing um, how you're interested in it um, as well. Now, in terms of the placement year um, option, now with a lot of degrees, um, you can normally add on a placement year if you do want to do that whilst you're at university. And um, for our degree, you do need to apply for the placement year option um, through UCAS, just because there are a limited number of placements that are um, available. So if you don't apply through UCAS, then we can't guarantee um, that you'll be able to do a placement once you do 
get here. Um, placements are really, really pop popular here at Bath. Um, around two thirds of, of our students do do them. Um, and currently they, um, they take place both in the UK and overseas um, in a variety of different um, private companies and charities within the health service um, as well. Um, and students can also go all, all all across the world. So we do have students who are currently in Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, South Africa, the US. Um, so if you did want to work um, abroad for a year, then that is certainly an option um, there for you as well. Now, on the other side of that, we do also have our education with psychology degree. This is a BA degree, so a Bachelor of Arts, um, and it sits within our Department of Education. Um, this is a bit of an of an interdisciplinary course, um, as you'll be picking up lots of different um, areas, not just of education and psychology, but also of sociology um, and social policy too. So it's a really wide ranging course. Um, the contact hours are quite similar to psychology, so you'll have around 10 to 12 hours per week um, during your first year, and again, the same level of independent study. Um, but this one is a lot more focused on coursework, so around 70%, about 7, 75% of your assessment um, is through coursework um, over the duration of your course. Now, in terms of what you'll be learning, um, again, it really does um, depend on what you're interested in. And like I said, it's, it's much more focused on the educational and on the social policy role, the role of education um, and also being able to evaluate um, education in, in the UK and, and overseas too. Um, so it isn't purely based on developmental psychology, for example. It does bring in lots of different um, um, lot lots of different um, aspects um, and and for that reason we have we have chosen to not be a BPS um, degree and um, just so we can draw on a range of disciplines and not just on psych psychology um, so if you are interested in psychology and education um, and sort of um, any issues surrounding that but you're not too sure if you want to focus just just on psychology um, then this may be a good degree for you um, as well in terms of the entry requirements, um, it is slightly lower for this course. So for the IB, for example, you would need around 35 points with a 655 in your high levels. For the diploma, you would need around seven, around 75%. Um, and you would also need um, to have a mathematics background um, as well. And just like in the psychology personal statement, we do want to see just your general um, enthusiasm for your chosen degree um, and being able to see that you do like working with children. You have um, any um, experience in that too, that can be volunteering or mentoring, for example. Um, yes, we really like to see that you have um, the background and the um, interest in this particular area of, um, of, of, uh, so, of social sciences. And then placement years for the education degree do vary and again do take place both in the UK and overseas um, and these can take place in research groups if you want to go into teaching, into mental health um, and, um, and a children's charities too um, and also working with, um, with, her, with her families um, and very young children um, as well. So a very broad ranging degree. If you do think that you are quite interested in more of the teaching field then again this is a really good um, degree for you to start off with as well. So just to finish up then on my little section just about our um, placements and our graduate um, opportunities. Um, so like I said, we do offer placements for all of our degrees um, for psychology. Like I said, you do need to apply through um, through UCAS for, for the placement year um, option, um, but it's a very supportive um, process. We'll start talking to you in your first year about where you might like to go and what you might like to do. And we'll sort of give you the list of all the placements that we do have there. Um, ready for you um, and then we will help you with things at like your CV, your cover letter, your interviews but of course it is down to you to actually go to the interviews and uh, secure the placement and then whilst you're out at placement we will normally have someone come, come and um, see you to make sure that you know you're getting on okay and that, and that you're happy um, in your placement too um, but you, you will also be um, supported by the Career Centre um, during this time as well. And like I said, we do have a number of placements um, all across the world and for psychology and for education specifically. A lot of them do work in research, in, in, uh, in a charities um, and you know, really do focus on that particular field. And then in terms of what our students do go on to do um, after their degrees here, here with us. So we are um, very highly ranked in the top 10 for graduate prospects for um, psychology um, and for our um, for our graduates. Um, so they really do go on um, and do some great things. Um, lots of them, um, if not the majority, will go on to do um, further training um, or further um, education um, if they want to stick within the psychology field and you know, become a fully qualified um, psych 
psychologists, for example. Um, so lots will go on to further education, um, but others will also go into teaching, into um, research groups, into charity work um, as well. So it is definitely a very um, varied degree. Um, but if you are interested in, you know, in in going into research, if, if you're interested in 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 going into teaching, um, then we do have these routes too. So you don't need to just stick within just psychology. Um, you can definitely um, um, expand and grow out of that um, as well. So that has been my little slot there. Um, just to leave my contact details here with you. Um, if you do want to get in touch, then please do let me know. Um, and any questions that you have at the end about Bath or about psychology here or just coming to the UK, um, then yeah, do let me know. But for now, I think I'll be handing over to Paulina. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can we stop sharing? There we yes, go. please. Thank you. And hopefully you'll be able to, to see this now. So hello everyone, my name is Paulina Lewandowska and I'm an international officer at the University of Essex. Welcome. Um, you will you will notice some uh, some similarities between the different universities, but what I thought um, I would start with is um, just an overview of what studying psychology in the UK is like about all the employability options available uh, to graduates in that uh, discipline. Um, then I'll cover uh, studying psychology at the University of Essex, as well as our entry requirements and, and fees as well. Um, so studying psychology in the UK, psychological theories inform everything, every aspect of our, of our life really, from web design, education, healthcare, HR. So when it, when it comes to, to finding an exciting and relevant subject areas, I think there is nothing quite that much as um, psychology um, just because of the impact that it has on every area of, of, our, uh, of our life. So um, I know some of you might be already might have already decided to study psychology, but I thought some uh, other uh, some other um, some others might have been um, interested in psychology, but might be still in that process of deciding whether they would like to study psychology or perhaps something else. Um, so I thought I would I would um, briefly cover why you sh you should study psychology, why choose. Um, that subject overall. So by studying psychology, you can develop subject specific knowledge. So there is growing need for mental health professionals. The world really needs more experts who can understand the human arm, a human mind. Our worlds and our lives have become faster and more competitive. And it is really, really hard um, to find uh, to find time for ourselves um, in this world. And this results in all kinds of symptoms and behaviours like depression, sleep loss, anxiety, etc. And I think you will agree with me that compared to previous decades, people are more willing to try to overcome those challenging. Um, so having the right training um, and accreditation to uh, to offer that support to to our societies, um, it's really really important now and uh, more than than ever before. It will also help. Studying psychology will also help you understand yourself better. Having an understanding thing of your own personality and an insight into you know your own behavior you your own personal traits can give you the unique perspective on the workplace regardless of what career you will um, pick at the end of your um, your degree um, you will use that knowledge uh, of psychology um, in a variety of different careers which I will uh, which I will uh, cover um, briefly in a minute, but you will also understand others. So if you are considering career in management or human resources, etc., the psychology degree can be the right fit for you because you will learn the skills, um, including you know conflict management, collaboration, leadership, that will be very valued uh, wherever you decide to work. Um, in in future, um, you will improve your communication skills as well. Studying subjects um, like language, body language, emotion can really help you to improve your interpersonal and communication skills. You will also develop your ability um, 
and to research through the assignments and the different projects that will be involved in your course in your degree. Uh, you will develop your ability to find different sources, find information, evaluate that information as well, which again can be used uh, can be used in a variety of different um, uh, careers going forward. You will uh, really improve your critical thinking as well. Um, that evaluation of, of the different figures, concepts, etc., will be really useful um, uh, in, in the future. You will improve your employability. In my psychology degree leads to a variety of different careers in law, in social services, education, business, and um, and really um, and can really help you to to ensure that you uh, get your um, dream job at the end of your degree. And it's also fun because there is just so many interesting things that you will cover in your lectures, whether it will be optical illusions um, that reveal the, the workings of your brain or talking about different shocking experiments, um, etc. There's always something amazing to uh, to learn about in the field of the human um, human mind and and behavior. Um, so why study psychology in the UK? UK was actually in fact one of the key locations in which modern psychological ideas um, evolved and took root. So it is the best place to, to study, uh, to study uh, psychology. Some of the specialist modules that you will study during you, your degree, regardless of which university you choose to, um, are currently, um, you can see currently on the screen. So whether it is clinical psychology, educational psychology, sports psychology, etc. There is a wide variety of modules and there's a lot of flexibility when it comes to studying in the UK uh, where you can really choose um, your modules and your expertise uh, when it comes to uh, to studying psychology. So in terms of employability, just to give you an overall idea um, of, of jobs where a psychology degree would uh, um, would be necessary. So as you can see, the clinical psychologists, counselling psychologists, etc. So there are the obvious choices. If psychology is something that you're very passionate about and you really want to pursue as a career, um, some of those um, some of those jobs in uh, on the screen currently will really um, um, the psychology degree will help you to to obtain those. You will need a degree. Um, so to be a clinical psychologist, for example, you will need a degree accredited by the British Psychological Society um, and the three years of postgraduate study, uh, which will lead to the doctorate in clinical uh, psychology. Uh, so just to keep uh, that in mind when when deciding on your um, on your career. Uh, but yeah, depending on your specialisation, you can work as clinical psychologist, so in hospitals and clinics, uh, facilitating group therapy, couples therapy, um, children therapy, play therapy, etc. So there are the variety of, of different um, of different jobs um, is quite wide there. In terms of jobs where a psychology degree would be useful, um, you know, the psychology degree and the way it is set up, it prepares you for a wide range of different careers. Uh, so if you did not want to become a trained psychologist or a therapist, um, you know, you could think about pursuing a career in education, in forensic sciences, in data analysis, in health and marketing, in advertising, um, in organisational development and, and human resources. So some jobs might include, some ideas of, of future careers might include advertising officer or a life coach or market researchers. So really the psychology degree will prepare you for the world of work regardless of what you decide uh, to do uh, after your degree. In terms of studying psychology at the University um, of Essex, um, at Essex, we pride ourselves in providing um, lectures um, that are delivered by world leaders in the research field. And um, when it comes to um, to the support with the employability, 
there is a variety of different uh, supports available um, for you. So our student development team is there to, to support you um, throughout your time. But we also have a research project. So at Essex, uh, you can work alongside researchers through our research experience scheme uh, placement and during that placement you you can gain the experience developing all kinds of skills used um, by the researcher from all areas of of psychology uh, so it's a really great experience to not only gain the degree but also get that valuable experience um, related to the field of psychology we also offer da data science for all um, at the university of essex for all students, regardless of, of uh, what subject they study, um, they can do that free of charge uh, alongside their degree. Um, the employability modules uh, at Essex are integrated throughout your degree as well, so you will really have the opportunity uh, to, to focus on, on your employability skills to ensure that you do get that dream job at the end of um, the, at the end of your degree. So in terms of the courses that we are currently offer at the University of Essex, um, as you can see, there is a variety of psychology courses, whether it is just psychology or psychology with cognitive neuroscience, cognitive science, etc. We also offer integrated masters um, in psychology. Uh, what that means is that within one application, you can apply for both uh, a course at the undergraduate and postgraduate um, level, which means that if you're really interested in 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 psychology, you can um, you can um, within one application you can apply for for um, both levels of study, which um, which makes life easy for you, um, and you won't have to apply for the master's course um, after you you graduate with with your undergraduate degree. In terms of the postgraduate degrees, if you again, if you're interested in pursuing that further, um, just to give you some uh, some examples of the courses that we currently have at the University of Essex. So psychology, research methods in psychology, sport and exercise psychology and cognitive neuroscience and neuropsychology as well. Um, we are very um, we are very um, lucky at Essex as well to have our own Centre for Brain uh, Science and um, that was opened in 2009 and it's, um, it's a purpose built um, building with amazing equipment that allows st staff to directly measure and modulate brain activity. Um, so you can look at things like eye movements, um, various um, you know, um, responses to different uh, to, to, to different stimuli, etc. So it's an amazing, um, an amazing um, way to really um, study the brain, see how you can stimulate it and measure brain activity, um, and um, and also um, how to how to measure uh, the cortical activity as well. So um, just very briefly, I will cover um, uh, I will cover more information about the University of Essex just to give you a brief idea I will start off with a short video we are Essex challenging convention is in our DNA a genuinely global community So yeah, that just hope we gave you um, a little of idea of um, of the University uh, of Essex. So we are home to the ambitious and the bold, and we really what we value in our students is that they want to make a difference and they really want to challenge the convention. Uh, we're middle-sized university, so we have over five, uh, fifteen thousand students, uh, but we are also very multicultural. Um, um, University, we we have staff and students from over 140 different countries. Um, it is the really 
the world in one place. We offer a variety of flexible courses. So I've only covered uh, courses in psychology today, but we offer a variety of, of other courses in other subjects as well. Um, and please, if you're interested in, in other areas, please feel free to, to check our websites as well. And we, we are um, located across three different campuses. So our main campus is in Colchester. We then have uh, campuses in Southend and, and Loughton as well. Um, and they're all very close to London within uh, about one hour uh, on the train. Um, just to give you a visual idea of where, where we are located, as I said, uh, we are located in a southeast of, uh, of England, uh, very close to the coast, very close to London um, as well, close to different um, airports. So our closest airport to um, our main campus, Colchester campus, uh, where the psychology department is based um, is London Stansted, but we're very close to other London uh, airports as well. Um, in terms of entry requirements, um, at Essex, um, the requirements vary between the courses. Um, so I chose to, to pick the entry requirements just for the psychology, uh, the basic psychology course, so BA or BSc psychology. This might be slightly different if you decide to combine psychology with, with other areas of expertise. So if you're interested in any specific um, courses and you, you would like to know more about entry requirements for those, please let me know. Um, please let me know and and I'll be able to to confirm that. But for the standard um, for the standard course, we will look at 70 percent overall average from the Devlin Lisa Diplomacy uh, plus 65 percent um, in maths from either the last year of high school or as an average from the last four years. Then for the master's degree it will be 60 percent or 2.5. And, and again, for the research courses, it would be a good master's degree. In terms of English qualifications, if English is not your first language, we accept a variety of different um, English requirements. Um, so again, if, if um, you have English qualifications that are different, please feel free to get in touch and, and we can confirm whether this, uh, these would be, um, this would be uh, sufficient. In terms of our fees, as you can see, for our psychology course um, at the moment, um, we're looking at twenty thousand fifty uh, for undergraduate course, nineteen thousand seven hundred forty for postgraduate, and our research courses are eighteen thousand eight hundred. Um, However, we do have a variety of different scholarships. Uh, we have an undergraduate non-EU regional scholarship, um, which is uh, up to five thousand pounds for the first year of study. We have IB scholarship as well, which is two thousand pounds for the first year of study. We have academic excellence international master's scholarship. So if you're interested in a postgraduate level, um, you you might qualify for for that scholarship, which is up to four thousand uh, pounds. We have also a variety of support scholarships and and department specific scholarships available as well. And if you study undergraduate degree with us and then choose to continue on to postgraduate level, we have loyalty discounts as, as well. Um, please feel free to visit our website to check all the um, different scholarships available. Uh, so thank you very much for, for this. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to, to email me on europe at essex.ac.uk. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. And I will now pass on to you. Yeah, Ali, uh, yes. Uh, we'll do the questions uh, at the end. If you still have you know, questions, please uh, write them in the chat box. Uh, we'll do them at the end. Thank you, Paulina and Ellie. Uh, it's over to you. Thank you. I'm just loading up my slides, so just give that a second. Can you see that all right? Yes. Perfect. Yep. Great. Well, thank you so much uh, to my colleagues for already delivering such a comprehensive overview. Um, I'm afraid I don't have much more unique content to add, but um, I'm happy to be here uh, nonetheless. So my name is Ali Stewart and I'm one of the international recruitment managers uh, at the University of Edinburgh. 
So I'll quickly introduce uh, some of you to, to the university and then I'll talk a little bit more about our psychology um, programs. So Edinburgh is one of the six ancient universities here in the UK. We are the youngest, being only founded in 1583. We are a global top 20 university. We're currently ranked, I think, at number 16 uh, in the world. And we're really proud uh, of our rankings uh, and our reputation uh, that kind of spans the globe. We were a founding member of the Russell Group, which is a collection of universities based here in the UK um, that are really kind of uh, led by research. Um, so that's a really strong indication of how much research uh, is an important part of the ethos uh, at the university um, in Edinburgh. So we do we are the largest university in Scotland. We have over 45,000 students studying with us, representing over 160 different nationalities. We also have a really large um, staff community of over 15,000 staff, and we're proud to have an academic to student um, ratio of one to five. And when you add in professional staff like myself, that student to staff ratio becomes one to three. So our students are really, really well supported uh, during their time at the University of Edinburgh. Our location, of course, is Scotland's capital city, and we are not a campus based institution. We actually like to say that the whole city of Edinburgh is really our, our campus, um, but psychology students will be based kind of our main central area hub, which is called our George Square campus, and it's right in the heart um, of the city uh, of Edinburgh. So a really great location to have access to world class attractions uh, in the city um, and a variety of our kind of different campus buildings. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, the academic structure um, of the university just to put it into context. So the University of Edinburgh is comprised of three academic colleges, um, but it's important to note that we're not a collegiate system like Oxford or Cambridge. Uh, instead, we just use the term uh, of college to identify how our academic disciplines are organized so we have three colleges and the psychology programs sit within our largest college, which is the College for Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences. So within um, each of our colleges, we have we're further broken down or divided into academic schools and psychology sits within um, our um, in arts, humanities and social sciences, uh, as I mentioned. And across all of our colleges, we have over four or just under 400 uh, undergraduate degrees uh, representing more than 58 different subject areas and we offer traditional semesters at Edinburgh so we have two 11 week uh, semesters with exams uh, at the end. Now here's where I differ a little bit from my colleagues uh, that have already spoken today. So in Scotland the majority of honours degrees or undergraduate degrees are four years in length. Uh, in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, of course, uh, they are three years in, du in duration. So in Scotland, we, we like to say that our, our four year degree structure offers students flexibility and choice of subjects, uh, not only in their early years, um, but then adds on to that specialization uh, into their final years. So in the majority of our, our programs, students um, are able to study abroad in their third year if they choose to do so. And this is an embedded part um, of the program. Something to note as well about uh, being an ancient university, which I mentioned before, is that we award um, MA degrees or Master of Arts for all of our undergraduate degrees in the humanities and social sciences. So in some cases, a degree in business um, or psychology and business, um, students would be working toward an MA, which although it says Master of Arts, it's actually an undergraduate qualification. So this is just a quirk um, of being an ancient uh, university. But what I really want uh, to get across today is that Edinburgh will offer students flexibility. So along with their core psychology courses, they'll have the option um, to choose other subjects in their first and their second year, really allowing them to develop their interests kind of more broadly. And in the third and the fourth year, um, they'll be able to specialize in certain areas um, of their degree that might suit them or interest them, such as cognitive neuroscience, uh, personality, intelligence, language and vision, and so on. So really having that kind of uh, range of choice is something that we think is really special and unique. At 
at Edinburgh. So we offer um, four degrees within psychology, which are listed uh, here on the slide. And of course, psychology is a science. It's an experimental and, and an observational one, and it uses evidence from research studies to develop and evaluate uh, different theories. So as such, our programs uh, really have a strong emphasis on developing skills in research methods, um, as well as st statistical analysis. And this really supports that research led teaching ethos um, that I mentioned earlier. So depending on which program uh, the student chooses, they'll be taught through um, a variety of lectures or tutorials. They'll complete a general introduction to psychology, covering topics like cognitive psychology, developmental psychology, uh, the psychology of memory and perception, uh, and so on. In their kind of latter two years, uh, they can choose from a range of advanced optional courses, uh, like I mentioned before. And these courses can expand and combine um, and you can combine core areas which are completing those requirements for the accreditation with the um, British Psychological Society. So students will complete uh, group work, they'll also complete independent work, um, and they might have different kind of options within their classes. Some of the advanced course options that we offer at Edinburgh will include human personality, psychology of language, uh, and the science of close relationships, uh, for example. So why choose psychology at Edinburgh? So I mentioned that we're consistently ranked uh, quite highly, depending on the rankings that we're, you're looking at, um, but we're ranked third in the UK for psychology and 16th in the world um, for the, the Times Higher Education World University rankings for 2021. And I mentioned we do have four programs um, and they each would allow the opportunity for the student to, to seek that accreditation um, by the British Psychological Society. So a student can gain this accreditation when they cover all the core um, aspects um, that the uh, accreditation requires, which is cognitive psychology, biological psychology, social psychology, develop, developmental psychology, and ind individual differences. They also must complete a dissertation uh, in our final year and achieve um, kind of a, a certain classification in their degree overall. And as you saw on the previous slide, while we do offer four different programs, because we offer that flexibility, it's up, for, up to the student to choose to select um, these core areas to make sure that if they're seeking um, accreditation, that their degree um, will, will be suitable. Our students also have access uh, to our facilities, which includes uh, labs for cognitive neuroscience, developmental science, human movement, individual differences, and general experimental psychology uh, as well. And as I highlighted earlier, our program really has a strong core emphasis on developing key and transferable skills, such as research methods and statistical analysis. We really want our students, our graduates, to be able to kind of hit the ground running uh, when they go into their kind of dream career, their graduate career, and we want them to have a well-rounded skill set that allows them to easily um, jump into a new role uh, and be successful uh, from the start. So I wanted to highlight um, a really cool uh, sample lecture um, that I'm going to share uh, in the slides. So as psychology kind of studies the mind, brain and behavior, uh, allows kind of students to test different theories to help explain how people interact with each other in the world, I thought it would be really uh, nice to share a sample lecture from one of our uh, lecturers on the science of, of close relationships. And this is, I think, a useful kind of tool, and I'll share the, the link on the next slide, because it really helps to understand how psychologists study, um, how they study what we perceive, think and learn about the world around us um, and the way kind of different factors can influence behavior um, and how interests and abilities and behaviors actually differ from person to person person. And this can really have such an effect on how we communicate verbally, non-verbally, and how we manage um, our lives. So Dr. Sarah Stanton is one of our psychology lecturers, and she delivers um, a lecture, which I'll touch on the next slide, which helps to get, give a sense of what students might experience uh, at Edinburgh. 
So I'll, I'll be able to share uh, this link with you um, in my slides, but it starts at kind of 15 minutes in and she goes into a lot of detail about how to sort of avoid conflict or actually highlights um, different uh, behaviours that might actually uh, increase conflict. So it's really interesting um, to see. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to, to, to this, especially um, coming out of such a, a big global uh, pandemic, but just something I like to share and gives a bit more insight into what a psychology lecture uh, might look like and what students might not really know about uh, if they were to, to take a, a psychology lecture at Edinburgh. And then I'll just finish up here with um, a few with one quick slide on how to apply and I'll go through our entry requirements too. So psychology is a, a competitive subject area at Edinburgh for students uh, taking A levels. We're looking for three grades, kind of an A, B, B or higher, uh, including one subject of either biology or human biology, chemistry, computer science or equivalent. For those who are perhaps doing uh, APs, we're looking for three APs uh, at grade four or higher, and one of them should be at AP Calculus at grade four or higher. If students haven't taken AP Calculus, we might be able to look at their kind of maths grade uh, as well. And for students taking the IB, we're looking for uh, 39 points ideally with three higher level subjects uh, at grade six and unfortunately we don't accept um, any of the local uh, qualifications for entry onto our our psychology program directly however if students uh, undertaking a local uh, qualification in Turkey would like to take a foundation year uh, our, our foundation program does offer a route uh, into psychology but we accept uh, applications through UCAS only uh, and it's important to note that for students interested in Edinburgh, psychology being one of our most competitive um, subject areas will likely close um, each year with the equal consideration deadline uh, in January. So I would highly encourage any students interested in psychology at Edinburgh uh, to apply before that deadline. And just to finish up with a few uh, links here on the slide, and I also want to point out that Edinburgh has a, a Unibuddy uh, platform on our website. So if any of your interested students want to kind of chat directly with students on our psychology program, uh, the Unibuddy platform uh, is really useful for that. We've also got a virtual visit uh, on our website that you can kind of take a glimpse and catch what it's like, like what life is actually like here uh, in Edinburgh. But thank you so much uh, for listening to us today. I wanted to leave some time at the end for questions, so I hope there is a bit of time for that. And again, my contact details are on the slide. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Ali. Um... Yes, we have one question. Uh, it's in Turkish. I'll translate. Uh, while we, you know, answer that question, I'm sure there will be a couple of more uh, coming. Um, they didn't ask uh, the average of living costs uh, for Essex, Bath, and Edinburgh. Uh, she appreciates it might be different, but she wants to get a kind of, you know, sense how it will, how much it will be. Um, shall we start with? Uh, she won't? Yeah, of course. Um, so um, here at Bath, we're just based in the southwest of England, um, and you may find that um, prices in the UK are slightly a bit more expensive down, down the south. Um, typically, um, the average cost of living um, per year in, in Bath is around the 10 to 12,000 pound mark. Um, so looking around sort of one, one to one, 1.2 thousand pounds per month. Um, and this will include things like your um, housing, your rent, um, which is the same thing, your, your bills, your food, your social activities. Um, so it does depend on what you're kind of, um, what, what you're doing, but yeah, the average cost is around the 10 to 12,000 pound mark. Paulina, as you are based in London, uh, the cost might be a little bit no, luckily where we are based, we are far enough from London for it not to be as pricey as London can be. So our living co costs are significantly lower than, than London itself. So I think we, uh, on average, we'll look at £289 per week. So around uh, similar to, so £1,156 per month um, on average. But again, that includes uh, all the different, uh, on all the different uh, living costs. Okay, Ellie already answered 1,100 uh, cost of living in Edinburgh per month. Uh, are there any other uh, questions? Yes, this is 
Um, hmm. Okay. Mina asks, uh, it's not uh, directly related to psychology, but when would you recommend to apply uh, through UCAS? Um, maybe one of you can, you know, explain uh, what what the deadlines for, you know, so not only psychology, but in general. Who would like to answer? Yeah, I can I can jump in. Um, so the um, as an overall, your deadlines um, in the UK will either be the 15th of October um, or towards more the end of January, depending on where you're planning to apply to. Um, so if you're going to be applying to Oxford, Cambridge, only medical schools, for example, then you do need to apply by the 15th of October. And um, for any other degrees and most other universities, it will be uh, this year is, is the 26th of January. Um, but I believe it's the last Wednesday or last Thursday going forward. Um, so it's sort of the last week of of um, January. This is the equal consideration deadline. So you do need to apply by then to have your application definitely considered. If you apply after this date, it depends on if there are places left at, at um, your chosen universities. So it's always good just to get it in for that January deadline. And um, if you are applying for those courses to be in with your best chance. Any of you would like to add anything? Um, yeah, I would like to just say that some universities, including University of Essex, have direct applications in place. Uh, so just to just to mention the difference between uh, the two. So when applying for you, because you can apply for a variety of different courses at different institutions, so you have up to five courses that you can apply for and they can be different different in in terms of the discipline, in terms of university, etc. Um, and you only are paying when applying through UCAS uh, a small administrative fee uh, around 30, 40 pounds uh, for all the uh, all the choices that you're making. Um, with the direct applications, this looks slightly different. Um, so depending on the institutions that uh, that you are applying for, um, it will be uh, you might be asked uh, to provide a deposit uh, when applying directly with the institution at the University of Essex that's £2,000 so in order for us to issue um, the CAS number that you will need to apply for your student visa uh, you will have to uh, you will have to pay £2,000 deposit this is then deducted from your overall fees so you're not paying extra but this just means that you might be expected to pay uh, more upfront. Um, 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 but as I said, this doesn't mean that you do do have to then pay uh, additional two thousand pounds. It just gets deducted from your fees, and that might vary from institution to institution. So uh, yeah, it's always best to check um, what the what the amount is for the institution you are applying for. Um, Samara, we can't hear you. Ellie, would you thanks, uh, Paulina? Ellie, would you like to add anything? Uh, you already written here, but maybe. Yeah, I think just for Edinburgh, we um, for for competitive programs like psychology, we would um, encourage applicants to apply before the equal consideration deadline because we'll close the majority of our programs after that date. Um, so if they want to be considered, definitely apply before then. Uh, yes, uh, well, uh, uh, competitive subjects and competitive universities uh, are filled uh, pretty quickly, so it will be better to, you know, uh, apply before January deadline. Also, uh, we run uh, How to Apply UK Universities webinar on Monday. Um, I'll be sharing all the webinars with everyone uh, registered for any um, uh, webinars this week. So uh, hopefully tomorrow evening you'll receive all the information. Um, Aja asked, which special extracurriculars can help us to get selected by universities? Um, Ellie, shall we start with you this time? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. I think um, my answer is going to be fairly vague um, on that regard, but I think um, What's most important, uh, as I think some of my colleagues mentioned uh, in their presentations, is to make sure that you're using your personal statement to share some insights into you as an individual applicant that we can't see from maybe your academic profile. So we really want you to take advantage of that personal statement uh, to tell us um, you know, some skills that you maybe developed while you'll be a great asset to study one of these programs at our universities and, and why you want to study these um, 
these programs like psychology, what motivates you? And to do this, you can certainly um, use examples from your extracurricular activities. We would probably expect that most of your examples um, come from perhaps an academic um, activity rather than purely extracurricular, but you certainly can use an extracurricular activity to demonstrate um, some of your skills, especially transferable skills that would make you, that would help to support you in your success uh, on the program. So I think that's where you'd really want to sort of try to differentiate yourself um, as an applicant, because I'm sure it's really hard for admissions assessors to kind of purely look at grades and get an idea of, of the applicant as an individual. So this is really where that personal um, statement comes comes into play. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Siwon, Paulina, would you like to add anything? Yeah, sure. Yeah, just to kind of um, just to echo that really is that we just do like to see who you are as a person. You know, the clue is in the name, it's your personal statements. Do make sure that you're telling us about you, your interests, your future plans um and really do when you're focusing on your extracurriculars um you know do try and as much as you can link them back to your degree and um, we do like to see things like sports and volunteering and and uh, things like that because they do have great tra transferable skills and um, but if there's anything that you can be doing um you know going to courses online lectures that really demonstrate your interest in that specific course um, and that just shows us that you've taken the um, initiative to really um, engage with it too yeah, and I will I will basically just echo um, um, everything that has been said. Just try to make it as relevant as possible to to um, the degree that you're applying for. So again, if it's if it is volunteering that you have taken part in previously, try to think about how. It, 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 what skills you have developed through that and link those skills directly to the degree to show that you are the best candidate um, and show that you already have the skills to, to cope with the programme and, and to be a successful uh, a student in that um, degree. Thank you. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a question related to AP. Do APs count in terms of applying to U uh, universities in the UK? Yes. Are they as effective as IBs? And related to AP, uh, one of the um, students asked um, a, if they apply on January, uh, she wouldn't have the uh, AP score. Uh, so what that be, uh, would that be a problem? So if you combine all. I can jump in. I think, yep. um, yes, absolutely. No problem to apply before you get your final score, score results. Um, if your teacher or is able to put in your predicted score, that would be useful. Um, but it, all admissions selectors will know that AP results don't come out uh, until July. Uh, and then in terms of do APs count? Yes, uh, they do. I'm sure they're welcome at most universities. I would say the difference between um, APs and the IB, at least for Edinburgh, but I imagine this is rather similar um, across the board is that we would count APs as individual subjects, where for IB subjects, we wouldn't count those at Edinburgh unless you had completed the full diploma. I hope that makes sense. I don't know if I worded that oddly. Um, but yes, if we were assessing a student on the IB, we would look for the full diploma to be completed as well as uh, specific grades in certain subjects where APs, we could um, accept them kind of solely uh, as, as as the subject that they are, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I think so. Uh, anything to add, uh, Siobhan or Paulina? No? Uh, just yes. just one very just one very small thing is that if you are doing a combination of AP or IBs with a diploma, for example, that's completely fine. We we see that very often with with students from from Turkey. Well, um, I mean, at Bath we do it. I'm sure it's in other universities too. So that's completely fine. Um, so you know we'll we'll base it on 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 that, and then you'll receive um, any offers based normally on a combination of these things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One final question. Uh, I'll answer. I can answer this. Um, if they study uh, university the first year in Turkey, uh, will it be counted uh, as you know foundation program? No, not uh, really. Uh, but um, well, it really depends on the universities. As far as I'm aware, uh, there is no direct you know transfer a system or anything, uh, but you can still show your grades uh, and subjects that you've taken, but it is up to the university to whether, you know, they accept you on the first year. 
Uh, would you like to add anything? No. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, it really depends on the university. Um, okay. Um, uh, huh. In terms of um, getting into the university, uh, if you start studying in Turkey, no, there is no relevance uh, at all. Uh, at the end of the day, they look at your high school diploma and the scores and so on. Uh, university, of course, as I said, you know, it really depends on the subjects you've taken and if there's any relevance uh, with the uh, program that you apply in the UK, uh, it may be considered, but it, it, we wouldn't say it's an um, advantage or disadvantage. Um, OK, I think we have come to the end. Uh, Siobhan, Pauline and Ali, thank you for uh, this informative presentation. Uh, presentations and thank you who joined us to watch this today we hope that you find it interesting and useful we wish you uh, all a great day and have a good evening bye all thank you everyone